In our last video, we largely implemented our array-based stack, but we stopped at the point where we were about to grow the stack and make it larger, basically make a larger array to hold the information that we had. And we stopped at this point because there are some considerations here. And one of the big issues is we have kind of pledged that our all of our methods will be order one. And well, what does that mean? Well, that means that they have constant time behavior. The amount of work that they do should not scale as the size of the stack. So if the stack has one element or one million elements, all of these methods should take the same amount of time. We're going to add a proviso to that in just a second, but first let's look at what we've written. Everything we've written so far is constant time. If this is just a Boolean check. This accesses an array. Arrays allow you to do order one access to random locations. The pop here is an order one operation because we just subtract and then do a data access. Here we store value and then we increment. Okay, and the if was safe too. All of this code so far is definitely order one. We have no problem here. But the copy is going to kind of break that. And we have to see what we can do to maintain it. So how are we going to do this? Well, first, we need to make a new array. I need to make a new array that's bigger than the last one. And the question really is, how big should this be? Okay. Um, and then I need to copy all the values from the old array into the new array. It turns out there is a method called array.copy where you can give it a source, a position in the source, a destination, a position and destination, and a length uh, to do the copying. So our source for our data is data, and we're going to start index 0. Our destination is temp, and we're going to start index 0 there. And the length is data.length. We want to copy all of this through. We could write a for loop for doing this, but there's a nice method, and it's quite possible that that method does something more efficient than what our for loop does. And then we want to forget our old data and remember this new copy that we've made. The question is, what should go here? Now, first off, this is order in, and it's because, you know, in some ways, the for loop would have made this more obvious. This has to do a copy of length elements. So if I've pushed a million elements on, this has to copy a million elements. That's definitely not order one, it's order in. So we're going to give a little wiggle room here. And what we're going to say is that our amortized cost has to be order one. And what that means is that on average, each of these operations should take order one time. Which means that one of them can take order in time as long as it only happens one over n calls. Okay, so as long as when we average it out, we get a constant. What can we put in here that would make that happen? So it's tempting to say something like, well, let's just make the array bigger by some fixed amount. Okay, maybe every time it gets 10 larger, maybe you want to make it 100 larger. Uh, in some ways, it really doesn't matter that much. What happens if you do that? Well, I want to put some little comments up here so we can see what, what happens. So we start off with an array of 10, which winds up doing 10 copies. And it grows to an array of 20. And once we get to that size, we will do another set of copies. And this will be the 10 copies we did previously plus 20 copies. We're going to grow again at 30, at which point we will have done a total of 60 copies. And then again at 40, where we will do 100 copies. At 50, we will have done 150. And in general, after 10 in pushes, how many copies will we have done? Well, 1, 3, 6, 10. Uh, turns out those are triangular numbers. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 is the 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15. 
and that sequence happens to be equal to n times n minus 1 over 2. What really matters here is it scales order-wise as n squared. And so when I've pushed n things onto my stack, I have to do n squared copies, which means that on average, I'm still doing order n work. So this is not acceptable. And it turns out that it doesn't matter if I make this 100 or 1,000 or whatever. If I'm just adding elements on, I'm always doing, on average, order n work for, for my copying. So what's the alternative? Well, how about we try instead of adding, we do multiplication. So after we've added 10 things, we've done 10 copies. When we add, uh, we do 10 copies, and now our thing is of size 20. After we've done 20, we'll do some more copies, but the next one isn't until 40, and then 80, and then 160. Okay, so if we add these up, this will wind up being 70 copies, this will wind up being 150 copies, this will wind up being 310 copies, and it turns out that in this case, the this grows as roughly 2 to the n, and this grows as, you might notice, it's actually very close to being 2 to the n plus 1, and then also times 10, because both of these were, were times 10. So when we divide out, we get a constant factor of 2. If you take 2 to the n plus 1, you divide by 2 to the n, we get the value of 2. And 2 is of order 1. So as long as you grow by a constant multiple, your amortized cost, the average amount that you of work that you do in your copying, turns out to, it all balances out, and it's, it's of, of order 1. Okay. And the reason really is because, yes, you do order in copies in this line, but you only do it one out of n calls. And, and so as long as you're growing by a constant multiple, it doesn't have to be 2. It could be 3 or 4. It could even be 1.5 if you wish. 2 just happens to be a nice middle ground. You're not wasting too much memory. Um, and you're not growing more frequently because, well, yes, it's order 1. The, the magnitude of the multiple is going to depend upon what this constant is. So, that kind of introduces you to the concept of amortized cost. Uh, and when we talk about the order of things, we're willing to have it be an amortized order for them. So we're averaging over many, many calls as opposed to just what happens in each and every single call. And this allows our stack to grow in a way where, on average, all of the operations, including the push, are order one.